Forex Focus brought to you by IG, taking a look at some of the crazy British pound price action we've seen over the course of the last several weeks. Pound down more than 500 pips against the US dollar, going back to highs that we saw in the early to middle part of July. I think that's going back to July 13th to be exact. So a little over a month here as we uh, conclude August. And you'll see that this pound dollar market has gone from over 131 to under 126, uh, where it's traded the last couple of sessions here. Um, quite a move in one of the major Forex pairs and, and, and quite a change in not only direction, but sentiment. This is a market that from the start of the year until mid-July was really uh, gaining a lot of bullish steam. Uh, you look at that price action and you have a market that's gone from starting the year around 120 to get above 130. And, and, and it was only midway through the year, really feeling strong uh, there and now has paired back almost half of those gains to split the difference around 125. Um, it has a lot of people wondering, you know, how much more could this market fall? Is this a blip on just a greater upside uh, trend? Uh, where could this pound dollar be going after falling 500 pips in the last five or six weeks? Um, thankfully, I have some historical data. Don't have the answer on necessarily on where the market's going. Uh, but as you'll see, dissecting some of the data and dissecting different potential viewpoints and time frames and strategies, uh, there rarely is a definitive answer, right? Uh, if you ask me where this market's going in the next week, the next month, the next year, I could give you three different answers. Um, first, let's look at the short term. And if we're wondering where the market might be going in the short term, Let's look at the short-term price action. Uh, and now we're broadening the scope slightly to look at the last year. And I mean, 125 is relatively expensive compared to the last year. Obviously, we've been up to 130 in the last uh, two months. But you look at the last year's worth of data and the majority of it spent below 125 with the lows going all the way down to uh, a shade under 105 at those historical extremes that we saw in September of 2022. So in the short term, yeah, there's potential for this market to fall. In the short, short term, there's potential for it to rise as well. Um, but it depends again on on your time frame here. If you're only looking for a trade in the next couple of days to weeks, and you're only looking at the last couple of days and weeks, then yeah, maybe potential for it to uh, bounce back here. If you're widening that scope out to the last year's worth of data, there's potential for it to fall. Obviously, given that it was down at 105 in the fall of 2022. Now, if we take another step back and, and let's say, you know, you're looking for the long term, you know, wh where is uh, the historical data over the last several years? Um, and you'll see that, yeah, 125 is relatively cheap, uh, given that the majority of the last 30 years of trading has been spent over 125. And what's really interesting is you go back to pre-Brexit trading, and there's actually no data point from 1990 until 2015 there of trading under 125. And, and so historically, the majority of the data is above this level here. Uh, of course, if you, again, it depends on your scope, and, and we actually have a really nice infographic here in a second uh, to show you how you might pair your scope with your um, uh, your viewpoint to create your potential strategy there. But if you reduce that scope to 2015 until now, the range is really 140 uh, down to 105. But yeah, you add in the prior uh 25 years here and the range is more like you know two dollars down to 140 really flip the script on this pair uh 
pre post uh, Brexit. But yeah, if you're looking at just the, the broad level last 30 years, majority of trading above current prices. Um, now, of course, where the market's going um, today, tomorrow, the next month, the next year, um, none of that is certain. What is certain is that it will likely move from where it currently is. And the current daily standard deviation is about 60 pips. Standard deviation has been as high as, you know, 100 pips plus. We've seen 100 pip days uh, over the course of the last several months of trading. Um, now, how you come upon where this market could be moving uh, is really going to have a lot to do with how you typically view markets. And this is what I always talk to people about, uh, which is th there's no right or wrong answer to where the pound is going or where the S&P 500 is going. Um, in, in theory, it's going to go in all three directions. And by that, I mean up, down, and sideways. And potential trading strategies could profit from all three directions in, depending on the time frame of the trade. And so I don't necessarily make a case for, you know, you should do this strategy or this strategy. This is better than this. But whatever you have either decided through uh, crunching numbers and, and uh, data uh, or just looking at uh, macroeconomic trends, however you've arrived at your strategy, just be consistent. And so if you are used to looking at day trade opportunities, look at that daily standard deviation, what the market tends to do on a daily basis. And when it moves outside to the downside or the upside, uh, do you usually go with the trend or go against it as a contrarian? Same with swing traders looking at stuff from a multi-day to, you know, week basis, look at the weekly standard deviation or look at the chart and say, okay, market tends to move a uh, pound dollar tends to move, you know, 200, 300 pips in a, a given week or so. And again, do you go against the trend? Do you go with the trend uh, and, and let that uh, decide for you? For example, you know, the recent move has been, oh man, over the course of the last several weeks, more than 500 pips to the downside. Do I usually go with the trend? Then I would sell into that. Do I usually go against the trend as a contrarian? Maybe it's worth buying on the on the bounce back. Um, and then finally, the longer term uh, uh, time frame here, the extreme trade. Is it at an annual high or low? Or do you even go further back? We just looked at 30 years of data. Are you looking for you know a multi-year trade here? Um, do you usually go with the trend? Do you think that this pound dollar depreciation that we've seen over the course of the last several years will continue where parity will be a normal thing for pound dollar? Or are you contrarian? Do you think we'll get back to the more normal prices around 140, 150? Uh, really depends on your lens here. Uh, and, and what's really cool is that, you know, all directions can be right if you have you know a, a particular time frame for instance you go back to the uh, really volatile price action of the the fall of 2022 and multiple strategies were right if in the short term you followed the trend and you sold into that down move obviously the market went from 115 to 110 to below 105 at one point if you had a longer term view uh, that was contrarian and you were, you know, buying that market as it went from 115 down to 110 down to 105 and held it for the bounce back, it got all the way back to 120 by the end of the year. And so, again, doesn't have to be a binary of, oh, the contrarian's always right, the trend follower's always right, the day trader's always right, the swing trader's always right. Develop your own strategy and just make sure you're consistent with it.